Welcome to the CMHD Induction Podcast. My name is Dr. Hassan Malik. I'm the lead on this QI project. Um, I work here in CNWL as an ST4. This is, or a specialty registrar as, as we're sometimes called. And I'm just finishing my time here at the Paul Mall CMHD. I'm actually the host most of these, most of these uh, recordings that you'll hear but today I've handed the reins over to my colleague who's on the other end of the spectrum, meaning that she is actually in the inpatient setting and we're going to swap jobs. So I thought it'd be good to say hello. I'll just quickly introduce her. Her name is Dr. Sadaf Aleem. You, you, you want to say hi and tell us about what, what your role is right now, what your grade is? Hi, Hassan. Um, I am an HG4 as well, like yourself. Um, I'm currently doing inpatient, like you said, and um, looking forward to swapping um, into your position. Um, and I've got a few questions, so hopefully you yeah, will be able to answer those. Yeah, so we're kind of hoping that with this, we can give you, the listener, a bit of insight into basically stuff which, is, which will not be in the induction handbook and, and things which won't necessarily you'll find in a guideline somewhere more about the everyday and I, I, I think for the brass tacks there's enough information there's a plethora so the idea here is that you kind of get an overview of what it's like and hopefully make your life a bit easier. So can I ask you something that has been on my mind for, few, for some time? Yes please. Basically what would be your average day look like? Mm. Um, a good way to answer that is just to how, what, my, what are my working hours? What's my schedule like? So barring any on calls, it's nine to five, Monday to Friday, but mm -hmm. my actual clinic days are only three days. So, and I have one special interest day and I have one admin slash teaching day. So, which I think is important to know because you're asked to set your own schedule in your own hours. So for me, uh, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. So those are my clinic days. And Tuesday, I have a um, special interest day. And mm -hmm. Wednesday, I just leave open for catching up on my letters, doing referrals, and, and the latter half or the morning half, depending on what day of the week. That's for learning, teaching. So what would your clinic they look like? Eight patients a week I have to see. And I'll just tell you the vanilla official textbook version of it, which is that I have to see eight patients a week, okay, in the three days that I, that I work at the CMHD. Two of them are assessments and the other six are follow-ups. I would say I'll start with what a, what a Thursday is like. I don't want to start with the Monday. There's enough starts to a Monday anyway in our lives. So uh, <laughs> there, there's... Uh, so, okay, so first nine is when you're supposed to reach at work. Obviously, I'm not too, I, I feel I wouldn't be misrepresenting Pakistan. In fact, I would, I would, uh, I would say that <laughs> I, I roll in around like 9.15 most, most days and I get some dirty looks, but I think I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'll stay later, but I've, my, my body is not designed. But either way, the cutoff before your, your rouge is 9.15. 9.15 is when the morning MDT starts. So that goes on on a good day it's for an hour sometimes there are more patients and depending on what's on the schedule ten thirty is the max i think we we go there and once that is done i'll tell you a bit more about when we talk about where to seek help and the other things but uh, mdt is still ten fifteen, ten thirty. i see my first patient at 11. so i usually read up on the notes or or just if there's any pending emails in the morning that's what i that's what i do 11 o'clock twice uh, again since it's a thursday that's my assessment day so i'll see a patient for one hour so mm -hmm. 11 to 12 i would say mm -hmm. 12 is lunch break but then i usually um just type up some uh, just type up some notes. I don't necessarily put in an entry right there and then, but I just write down uh, what I saw. Now, the on 
Now that's also a good time for a lunch break. I come back and then my next patient is usually at 1. Uh, again, hopefully, uh, just write down some notes. It's 2 p.m. Now, this is the main part which variates. So between 2 to 4, so I have one hour of supervision. It's on Thursdays usually. So uh, between 3 to 5 is supervision time. So sometimes the CT who's working uh, with me, uh, shout out Dr. Takaria. Uh, so, uh, so she is usually goes 3 to 4, and then I'll end it from 4 to 5. But within those two hours, if there's anyone who needs my help uh, or if there's other assessments going on, if someone needs a doctor prescription to fill out, anything like that. So that's when the time gets taken up. Um, it's like an open plan office. So, you know, so sometimes people do approach you with some kind of question. And yeah, then have my supervision. And around five, that's... It's a Thursday. The next day on Friday, I would there would only be same thing, nine to nine fifteen to ten thirty. I have my MDT. So MDT is every day, every single day, whether you're there or not. So that's the constant part. Sometimes you get handed in tasks from the MDT to action, but on Friday I have for for follow-ups i see i never or will i try really hard not to keep any patients between 3 to 5 p.m on a friday because i know that there will be some major decision to take before monday some mm -hmm. risk assessment that needs to be done from triage or someone who's unwell and it's the weekend and there needs to be a plan in place so that's when i feel a lot of the as close to emergency duty on uh, in a CMHD as, as, as you get. And is this sort of timetable or schedule fixed? Like, is this been, has this always been the case in the team? No, so it, it's not fixed. And I feel my predecessor had a different schedule and people mm -hmm. do it. I, I would say that some people even, for example, keep assessments at 10 a.m. They don't, uh, they wouldn't necessarily attend the whole MDT meeting. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like if you can plan for that, there's also... So what I didn't know, and I think a good good um, tip to leave would be that there are different, most departments have a meeting. Mm -hmm. So the therapies hub, for example, meets on Thursdays, 11 to 12.30. Every day at 3.30 mm -hmm. to 4.30, there's a triage meeting. Mm -hmm. Ideally, there should be a doctor there or like sometimes I feel like therapies are usually uh, happy to see me. And I'm able to ask some questions about psychology or why are we doing this treatment or why not EMDR for PTSD? Why are we using tra trauma-focused mm -hmm. thing? So uh, I think those are a good way to understand how the team works and also to develop relationships which are necessary uh, if you're working with a big team. And in the morning MDTs every week, would you have a psycho psychology rep there? Somebody representing from psychology. Yes. Okay. So say for instance. Yeah, usually. So, so sorry, what my question was that say for instance, you've done an assessment on Monday and you believe that this person needs to be discussed by a psychologist. So yeah. would you do that on wed on Thursday when you return back to work? It's well attended. The MTT is usually well attended from all departments. There are multiple social workers. There are also some trainees. So I feel... Excuse me. Uh, so I, f I feel like it's well attended by trainees as well as senior social workers. So the hierarchy is kind of that there will always be a duty senior. So there'll be at least like two okay. duty seniors, in fact. So those are social workers. Those are like experienced people who've like seen it all. You know, some of them are, for example, nurses from HBOS and 136 Suites and things like that. So they're they're hardcore. They know their stuff and they can lead a team on their own if need be. So there's always two people like that. Then some days, depending, you know, like for example, if I'm working three days a week, I won't be there every day. So some days mm -hmm. you'll see certain faces and it's a good way, I think, to talk about cases of concern. There's always like a section. So we start off with, for example, ongoing cases of concern, like someone mm -hmm. who has risk and needs to be discussed literally every day about what are we doing for this person in an MDT. Once that is over, you, me, psychologist, anyone, social worker can just bring up a case. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and be like, okay, this is someone I saw, this is the plan I made, this is something I'm worried about, this is something I need help with. Um, so I relied quite heavily on that because I, I would know, for example, on Thursdays, there'll be two consultants attending the meeting. So I know there's certain cases on Thursdays I could bring in, mm -hmm. uh, including my own uh, supervisor. Friday, it's the opposite. There actually may Actually, no, I think Monday is the opposite, which is like, there's less doctors. I am the doctor, you know, so I'm like, okay, today I, I have to like, I have to speak for my colleagues, you know, I have to contribute from my, from my thing. So it goes both ways. Um, and it's, um, you make decisions faster, like, okay, this person, for example, to answer your question about psychology, this person would benefit from psychology. This person, can you lead on this to liaise with psychology, tell them this is the problem and kind of fast track it. It's, I, I think one striking thing for me in the, uh, in the CMHT was, uh, I, I don't know what your experience is, but I rely very heavily on emails and email chains and, and things like that. It was not like that. It was more about MDT spoken. Okay. You would, so people note down what you're talking about in the CMH and it's transcribed. Um, but that's it. They, un unless it's something really formal, there are limited things. If you really need advice or just need to discuss a patient, you would email them the whole data about a back. Like I, I used to send like whole emails. Okay. This is the background. This is my task. And then they just literally not reply and just like walk over to me and be like, yeah, buddy, <laughs> 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 tell me about the patient. Okay. What do you want to do? And it's, it's kind of fast like that. So, um, I think so, uh, to be aware, you know, to be aware important question for me, I guess, would be, mm. say, for instance, I've done an assessment on Monday and I I want um, this patient to be referred to psychology or OT, but I'm not in till Thursday. So again, yeah. can I just drop an email or should I just walk over to the department, uh, to the team member? Yeah, I'll, I'll just like clarify myself a, a bit because although I was saying that not all decisions are via email, but system one, and the notes that you put in into the records are so there it is it has designed the system itself is designed in a way that you can literally like just do a few clicks and refer for an assessment list for a certain team oh that's fantastic that's really helpful for example if i need like community navigator i mean like i said throughout this like podcast you can literally go to each episode talking about how you can refer to them so you, you can just get a review of it as well mm. um but but yeah so so once you understand the system a little bit you basically each department will have its own referral process some some of them are more formalized than others mm. um so uh so yeah so so most most of these teams some of these teams also have their own managers like for example, the admin team has its own manager. So if you feel there's anything in the process, you need improvement or they'll come to you and they'll be like, Hey, we saw your referral, but we need this for it to be successful and, and things like that. So I like it because each team has a referring system, but they also have like an oversight system, including you and I of how the referrals are coming in, if they're appropriate or not. Okay. Well, that's, that's really good to know because if there's an inbuilt system, it fast track things automatically, isn't it? So that's really handy. Having said all of that, um, there, there is a way to, uh, like there's the human factor in it, in the sense that, for example, if I add someone to a list, they will chronologically go through the list, right? of, you know, first come first serve or whatever as it is. But if, um, but I can like literally go into the meeting and present the patient myself and be like, Hey, this is my referral. Mm -hmm. I referred to you, but blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. What do you think we should do? And then, you know, then they're on waiting lists and stuff, but at least you can fast track when it is discussed. If you attend their specific meetings or their check-in stuff, I, I think it's kind of good. Like there, there's like a classic way of doing things, but there are different little avenues built into the system to kind of, because the risk changes really fast. Yes, of course. The, what, what you taught on, on one day was, is very different a few, a few days later. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the skill that is a skill that you would have to develop. I think with, with community, like it's not like an inpatient that decisions need to be thought of ahead uh, in the sense that 
you think about days or weeks or months, whatever, it's not if it go, but it can literally go down to what I was saying before, you know, Friday, 3.30 p.m., someone needs a decision. Um, so it, it changes really fast. So there, so depending on the risk profile or depending on the thing, there's ways which will eventually get it done. And there are things which you need to fast track because of whatever the clinical presentation is. So there are nice avenues. I, okay. it's, it's busy. That's, it's a good system, but it's so busy that it stacks the max, you know, so, uh, so what would be the busy, like what, what is the busiest day looking like? So a busy day for me, like just off the bat, the main thing that I uh, distinguish between a busy and a non-busy day is when do I do my notes, okay? If if I've literally had to see patient after patient, attend meeting, discussion and things like that to the point that at five when literally there are no more people, everyone is done for the days when I'm like, okay, I got like a moment to myself where I could write down all that I've done and then I document all of those notes and then I stay late, you know, because uh, like my policy generally is that I will stay as late at work as, as I want or can or need to, but I don't want to take work home. I don't want to go home and open my laptop because I, I don't want to get into that habit. So that off the bat is how I distinguish what is a busy day for me because what I was saying before, there's like a, a I need to document things because the emergency teams or the weekend need to know what the update is if something deteriorates. Um, anyway, so yeah, had like a morning meeting. During the morning meeting, um, someone comes up to me and he's like, hey dude, there's this, uh, sorry, don't call me dude. I'm just, <laughs> call, hey, hey, hey doctor, um, you know, there's some unwell patient at, at reception or, you know, one of the nurses comes up to me and there's someone who's presented who's quite unwell and they are, you know, and it's, there are other patients there. Um, so they would be a, so yeah, so I go there, I assess the patient, do what, whatever needs to be done. Um, and then, you know, oh, it's, it's late for the meeting now, it's time for my uh, next patient. Okay, so I'll, I'll go see my patient. While I'm on the way to see the patient, someone stops him, it's like, hey. Uh -huh. So I try and support that person, see, see them, you know, make that quick decision, go see my patient. Once I come out with the patient, usually I go sit down Then I'm like, oh, I haven't checked my emails yet. <laughs> and then, oh gosh. Okay. And then, and then so the outlook opens. It can opens. get busy, I guess. Yeah, and then the outlook <laughs> opens. So generally, that's what I mean by like uh, emails. So because I didn't get a chance to look at it, if someone really needs me, like for example, the admin team, they're like, hey, your patient has arrived an hour early. So they'll Skype me. So they'll mess in a little ding and it'll show up and they can see how, when I've been on the computer and stuff. So, um, yeah, so then I'll check the emails again, depending on how fast I need to um, reply to them. Maybe just get some of those. If I saw the patient, I need to refer them, put something down uh, there or just write my own notes and, and wait for it to be done later. So more patients, more assessments, but I think what makes it busy is that because different teams are seeing patients and they're all, um, there might be a day where there are a lot of unwell patients, someone needs a prescription, someone needs a decision assessment, someone needs support. So you end up kind of like supporting other people more. Okay. It might be that there's no consultant or no other doctor that day. So it's a little bit like being on duty or being on call. Okay, Hassan. So I think my next question would be, about the referrals, like who could access our service? Uh, I went to this QI conference uh, in 2022 and some of my colleagues from the same trust, uh, there was Dr. Rimple and Dr. Chance, um, a registrar and CT respectively. So they did this like, it's called like caseload management strategies in the community mental health team at Queens Park and Paddington, CNWL and Dr. Graham Bear, B-E-H-R is the lead. So they have this school referral pathway diagram and as part of their audit, and it basically breaks it down really easily. So I'll just like broadly talk about it, which is that, so there are two types of referrals. Uh, actually, there are three types of referrals, but two of them lead to the third. So the two are internal and external. Internal means that basically we are, if someone is in the ward, they can be discharged directly to the community mental health team, right? 
if they are in the ward, they could be stepped down to an HCT, stabilized there, and then stepped down further to the community mental health team, or some other like parallel CMHT could be transferring patients into us uh, within the same trust. Most of it is based, your job will be based on, uh, a lot of it will be on the external referrals, which is GP, single point of access and the local authority. I have to be honest, I don't know too much about the local authority, but I'm hoping the social workers can help me with that. But for GPs, I can advise that it depends the the teams and your caseload is defined by uh, which GP service is the person registered to, which in turn is is identified by where, what postcode do they live in. So um, I'm going a bit ahead, but um, you have to be aware that you the patient you are seeing is from the Neo Health team, which is at least for me that was a team I was part of. There are only two teams, and that team is defined by what group of GPs they cater to. So far, so good. So internal and external referrals, external referrals. There's a whole triage team. Again, there'll be a different episode on that. But the whole triage team leads into the third type of referral, which is an open referrals, which are just the cases which are open long term, and the internal referrals, the one that comes from the ward or inpatients or HTT, that is the pathway coordinator, that's the MDT who already make that decision. Ideally, someone some someone from, from the community mental health team will go to a meeting of ward round and be like, okay, yeah, sure, I think this person is suitable for CMHC or no, they're not because of this reasons. All of this goes into an open referral. You have allocated cases, you have clinics, you have specific specialties um, allocated cases would be those who have care coordinators or whether they are UNI doctors, they're seeing the medical allocation. Clozapine clinics, the whole different setup, social care only, so that's social workers, community navigators, there's psychology only. And there's also a, a high percentage, someone did an audit a couple of years ago, and uh, I think, I, I don't want to misquote it, but it was 50% or more of the first presentations were actually uh, uh, personality disorders, uh, complex emotional needs, what used to be called EUPD. So there's a specific CN practitioner there. Uh, shout out Josie, very cool lady. And also other teams like dual diagnosis, art psychology, employment support. But all of that comes into in, from the internal and external referrals. Last part of that diagram is discharge, which is Again, you discuss an MDT, you discuss in supervision, you and I ourselves could say that, okay, they're discharged from both our care as well as from the CMHT overall. Uh, so the overall discharge is done by the last person to see them in terms of the actual stuff you have to write down, the letter to GP, depending on who was their most recent carer. Once you discharge, you can discharge to the community, you can discharge, well, not the community, I mean like the GP, you can transfer the care to uh, another team from CMHD. Someone could move locality, so they're no longer under your care. So it kind of loops nicely back into how they come in and in the first place. Again, so we're having so many referrals in. I mean, how, what would you classify as, as a good referral or is not good referral? Um, so I, I would say that for the way I see the referral, the way I would define it is our good referral would be whether it is the right thing for a registrar to see. And when I say registrar, I would just like, I, I'm not going to talk about necessarily, like I would assume that they have been triaged or they, there is, if someone is referring mm -hmm. to me, they, they, they have identified that a doctor is needed. So w once that doctor is needed now, it's like, what type of doctor? What grade? Is this a consultant thing? Is a registrar who's Section 12 approved as well? Is a specialty doctor? Is a junior doctor? We even have medical support workers who can also make decisions like taking blood oh, and nice. some of the uh, groundwork that you have to so, do. Sorry. Um, so these these professionals, they're based in, in Paul Mall within the clinic? These professionals, they're based in... Yep. Yep. So for example, the so each... Uh, what should I say? So f for me, I, I would say a lot of the clozapine clinics, you know, the assessments, the early assessment, a lot of the, I want to call it routine stuff mm -hmm. for a doctor mm -hmm. is needed. So that's core training, that's medical support worker. 
I I kind of like I should say this, but I I felt really happy when I got like a patient <laughs> with hyperprolactinemia because like okay I know this I've done cask I've done everything, dude I I gave her like options I did the right tests I called the right people but I was like okay I reflected on it I'm like okay that was a bit too uh, easy it was standard it wasn't complex at all there weren't like three different. Mm. complexities to that for example do they also use substances do they um you know are they also undergoing a trial for example is there are they being evicted while while i'm i'm seeing them so they, there's always some kind of complexity and the answers aren't you have to choose the best uh, you have to choose or create a plan which is the best mm. for that circumstance when there is no good answer so so those are what i would say would be a good referral to me and that makes me think of new ways and i do you know the idea is to eventually become a consultant so um i want to see these cases and uh there are quite quite a few complex patients in um in the in the cmhd i have one last question i think that's the most important question for me t- taking over from you Ooh, yeah <laughs> is yeah. what is the number <laughs> on your case load that i'll be taking over So I think gen- generally twenty to thirty patients. I think just for if, again, if I'm not mistaken, then even for care coordinators and like uh, key workers, a uh, thirty is an average to go by. Mm. There is a I think my my supervisor is and some of the senior social workers are all they're on my case, and I think with good reason about it's like why is this person part of our case load? They don't necessarily mean it in a what should I say? I'm like, why, why, why is that like a thing? Because there's the more cases that are open, the more resources that are being utilized, and the mm-hmm. the main question that they ask me is that what are we doing for this patient? Okay. Are we actively helping them, mm-hmm. or are we or are we not? And uh, what my supervisor asked me is that. Why are you seeing this patient? So I was like, "Well, what do you mean? I, I like the patient. I like seeing them. I want to monitor <laughs> them. They're they're like, in a way, like they didn't explicitly say it like that, but that's kind of like my need to see more patients I'm comfortable with and see them again and things like that. But but they're like your your time and your expertise are valuable. If you can delegate this to a pharmacist, or if you can delegate this to a junior doctor, another junior doctor, or like you were saying, there's there is no role for medicine. There's just social work." So, so do that see and see someone else um because your um time is valuable the rule in the cmhd is that there has to be some clinical contact every 45 days okay i say clinical contact i don't say a doctor contact mm-hmm. so that could literally be a phone call that could be a welfare check that could be an appointment that could be close bean clinic So for that's why like for example the clozapine clinic if someone's coming in for weekly blood tests or they are coming at least once a month to collect their medication and that's a clinical contact mm-hmm. so those things are pretty like smoothly run uh but for patients with varying degrees of complexity that variates so yeah. I used to initially give like follow ups for 3 months later and they're like what are you doing mm-hmm. if if they if they were good enough for like 3 months then what why are they on your on your case load you need like a review fine discharge them back to the gp tell them to refer back in a couple of months if appropriate or you know if you need someone to check in on them tell a social worker or a care coordinator to to do that call i i think this is a very good way of working 4 weeks is generally the magic number for you uh just because as for as far as nice guidelines go if you're making in your follow ups you'll be making medication changes or you'll be prescribing medicine most guidelines again uh depending on it is like off antipsychotics monitor after changing dose review xyz in 4 mm-hmm. weeks antidepressants monitor response at these 4 weeks of like one dose before increasing it or changing it or so some of it will be guided by the modsty guidelines or by nice cks whatever you're using mm-hmm. um but i haven't seen most of the really long term stuff like you know 3 th- months whatever hpa1c to check or prolactin to check next year most of the stuff the gp takes care of it and when i'm seeing someone again i just like run through to see if it's been done uh, so that's uh, all the time that we have So that I can't thank you enough for taking your time out and and being brave and being the first person to to record for this project. 
So it was a pleasure, Hassan. I think this is really, really good what you're doing uh, because it gives it it calms the anxiety of going into something very new. Although I've got CMHT background, but still the team is different, the procedures are different, pathways are different. So it does give you some insight. It's not like I'm walking into the dark. So I've got some light. <laughs> So yeah, just just uh, before we go, just I think I just have to officially kind of like give that disclaimer because this is going to be on a relatively public forum, although only on the CNWL website that whatever we discuss is general advice and it shouldn't replace uh, clinical decision making. You're free to be inspired and take knowledge from what we're talking about. Um, but I think depending on the scenario, always follow what trust nice cares generally it says and um yeah so we do check out the other episodes we've got an exciting bunch here and for now myself and sadaf we want to say goodbye goodbye